Hi, I'm Maggie. Hi, I'm Grace, and this is A Very Bookish Podcast. Hey guys, welcome back to A Very Bookish Podcast. This is episode 31. We're going to talk about the Shadow and Bone series with a special guest. Today, I have my brother here, my brother Jacob. Say hi, Jacob. Hello. <laughs> it's been an interesting start of this is our second start to the podcast um we have jacob on here today because he doesn't re- he's never read the books before and so he's literally coming this blind reacting i guess you could say to the series having nothing expecting nothing versus us readers who are like oh yeah this is gonna happen next and this happens next and then jacob's probably over there like what's gonna happen and then it's yep. like oh that's it yeah <laughs> no it, like when we, we were watching it because like we were deciding okay we're gonna start it we're gonna start it we're gonna start it but then like it took it took weeks for us to start it, it took then like we, months yeah we finally did and it was like we're watching one episode a night and that's it let him savor it and then i'm like oh, cool so we were watching it and i had to keep he told me don't react don't say nothing don't gas or nothing and i'm like i won't i promise she does that when you know it's okay i do it too i was doing it the whole time i still do it it's it's, it's it is what it is but um we we got through it and it was pretty cool it was a good bonding experience yeah how long did it take y'all to finish the season <laughs> <laughs> exactly <laughs> Took you a couple of weeks, didn't it? Uh, like, there's some episodes that I'm like, wow. Which, which, okay, which episode was like where you were like, after you finished, you were like, holy cow, like, whoa. Do you remember which episode that was? I think like the first one mm-hmm. would be good if I didn't watch the trailer. She made me watch the trailer, and oh. it was like, you know, they're setting things up. And I'm like, I'm usually like that with like shows that I watch, especially because like I try to watch as much shows as I can. So like usually I could tell if I'm on like a show on the first go around. Like there's a bunch of animes I watched, but then like the first episode, I'm out. But like this one was pretty cool and like building everything, getting to know the characters. And I was like, yeah. So the first episode, it had me hooked. It hooked you in. Yeah. yeah. I, yeah, because I, I forget that like, I, I totally forget when, like, you watch it. It's, like, there are people who watch the show who had no idea it was books. And, like, we were selling out of it at Barnes & Noble. Um, but I, like, totally forget that, like, y'all, there's some people in this world who have never read the books and, like, just saw the show and was, like, oh, this is cool. It's a book. Versus, like, us book readers were, like, anticipating this show for the last year and we're, like, oh, my God, there's going to be a Netflix show, Shadow and Bone, Holy Cow, Ben Barnes. <laughs> all the edits and stuff and so yeah, that's interesting that's what i ended up telling him i'm just like oh ben barnes is in this and then he's just like who the fuck is that and i was just like it's prince caspian and then he was like oh that guy mm, okay i was just like ah you're not too much on tiktok to know what's been up and so not. yeah <laughs> yeah well mm-hmm. I grew up with Ben Barnes. I don't know. I, I grew up like I, I went to Disney World and I still I got the picture from my mom of me with Prince Caspian. Oh, that's cute. <laughs> At the time, I thought he looked exactly like Ben Barnes. Like I was so excited. I was like, oh my gosh, he's like crushing on me. I'm like this 10 year old little girl. And I'm like looking up at this like probably 31 year old man. And he's probably just like this idiot child needs to leave i'm like sweating and stuff i'm like oh my gosh he's looking at me like how all girls do it at that age but i like looking at the photo now i'm like he looks nothing like prince caspian you fantasized it's okay it's okay those those movies were my childhood i still watch that well because like i like the first one that's like that's That's an iconic scene kind of when they're running at each other Mm-hmm. I get chills when like the leopards start like pushing forward. Oh, and they have the little yeah, banner thing, yeah. and I'm like, yeah, go, go. Yes. Land. <laughs> I'm trying to think. I yeah. I usually when I rewatch, I usually just rewatch the first one because yeah. it's like it's nice 
and simple. And then I skip to Ben Barnes. <laughs> Cause I like the second one. Cause he was pretty cool in there, but they tried to give him like this Euro Spanish accent because the True. guy, the I think I think he was saying something about it about like the director telling him like, well, they're Spaniards. He's like, well, the Spaniards, you gotta get kind of give them an accent. So he tried to come up with one on his mm-hmm. own. And then the second movie, they're just like, yeah, see, we're not gonna do that this time. <laughs> just stick to your regular accent. Yeah, and I like the se- the third one, but just for him. Okay. And and I, and I like I like movies when they're on a boat pirates yeah pirates. i mean it's not pirate but still Bye-bye. but like they're on the sea pirates and, and generalization edmund. edmund was older in that one that's true i didn't like edmund oh no it wasn't edmund who's the new guy Gosh, oh so um uh, the cousin cousin nah uh, something neville neville no that's let not. me i'll look it up real quick oh. um <laughs> <laughs> uh he's the guy from maze runner the guy yeah. with long eyebrows yeah i'm trying to think can you imagine having those type of eyebrows yeah you're you're type, always yeah, like you're typecast for the douche with the uh, yeah with that look anyways i forgot movies oh yeah. he it will will poulter i forgot he i forgot who he played but it doesn't say who he played interesting but yes, I know which guy you're talking about. Yeah. yeah. But yeah. So when I told him that Prince Caspian was in it, he was just like, uh, oh, whatever about it. And so we just kept watching it. So I I do admit, I like when I showed him the trailer, it was because I was trying to hype him up to it because I'm like, mm-hmm. I want to be excited about it. I want to think about it. But then as soon as I showed it to him, I was just like, I shouldn't have showed it to him. I should have left them completely in the dark. So my question is, so like for me, I hate reading synopsises of books. So I hate knowing anything about the book. Um, and I like to go in like fully, like not knowing anything about it and just going into it and seeing if I like it. Is that how you are with like TV shows and stuff and movies? You don't like to watch trailers. You just kind of go into it. And if it catches you, it catches you. And if not, it not, it doesn't. Yeah, I'm kind of like that. I mean, with everything, I kind of just don't want like a outside perspective because then i have to like come in with like an expectation of it yeah because it also spoils a little bit of it because like you're like oh she's a sun summoner and you're like you don't know that the first what one and a half episodes the first second half the first half of the second episode too you're like what is she and then you're like oh so i like to though the first episode was pretty cool because, like, um, especially the timing between the two groups. Yeah. Uh, well, because, like, you figure out later on in, in like, the, the third episode, second episode, mm-hmm. that Kaz and Inej, that whole thing of them figuring out who that person that they got off the ship, getting the information about this job, is all happening after... Alina is already taken to the little mm-hmm. palace. I thought yeah. that was pretty. I how did you feel about the blended the two stories of like Alina and Mal's story and Alina's story of becoming like the Sun Center versus like the Kaz Barker? Do you think they um mixed it well and blended it together well based just on without knowing anything from the books? Yeah, I think it was a little bit like a of like a double edged sword because like it was blended real like. You stay kind of interested, but like when you have those scenes with like Kaz and everybody in the crows, it's like cool. Like I love this. I want to stay here. I want to live with these guys. And you go back to Alina, and she's like crying. <laughs> she's like, just crying on the bedroom floor. <laughs> get up! I don't want to be a sum summoner. I'm like, yeah, this whole thing like depends on you. But there are cool moments, and I think like, um she has like the better moments of like kind of world building mm-hmm. Kaz is kind of like the more like action-packed like more like just cool things you want like in a show yeah yeah because um the six of crows book is a heist book so it's it's it doesn't it deals with their air magical elements versus like the Sh- shadow and bone trilogy 
it definitely is that more heavy world building where it's talking about the magic systems, learning how to do magic and stuff. So you kind of, I, which is interesting because the Six of Crows book is two years after the trilogy. So we're, as readers also, we're seeing what the crows are doing two years before the book, which yeah. is interesting, which I don't know if you knew that. I didn't <laughs> I didn't tell him nothing. You didn't tell him anything? So I'm just spitting all of this information to him. Yeah, and then there's just like the, the math equation going on. <laughs> the woman with the math equation, she's like. Uh-huh. <laughs> yeah, I mean, because like Alina is giving us more of like the political side of it too. Mm-hmm. And the other guys, the crows are just, well, we need money let's go do this thing i did like the crows um scenes a lot more jasper is like hilarious i love him so much the casting for this series was spot on it's 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 oddly weird how when you read the books and like you imagine him and stuff and you imagine kaz they've majority of these characters like kaz freddie carter and ben barnes were actually fan casted years ago as Kaz and um, the Darkling on Tumblr. And like, there were literally fan edits of them. And Leigh Bardugo was like, well, they're gonna be like the actual characters now. So it's kind of funny how Leigh like listened to readers and were like, if you want them, we'll get them with that Netflix money. <laughs> so Yeah, like Freddie, he looks so... He looks exactly like Kaz. <laughs> It's like literally exactly like him. Um, and he's such a sweetheart off the set. It's so sweet. I, I haven't shown you any behind the scenes stuff. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I've mm-hmm. been trying to keep him close yeah, cut been... edit. Yeah. Because yeah. I already messed up with showing him the trailer. So I was just like, I'm not showing you. Yeah. You told me little things though. Like, yeah. like there were like little things. I would ask a question, but it was like more like me just asking <laughs> myself out loud. And she'd be like, oh, this is what it is. and I'm like, hey, ah, okay. That's not what I no, okay. no, 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 no. Cause he would he, you asked me kind of like about the squalors or something like that, about their powers and stuff. And I was just like, well, yeah, it's they each have like a thing. And I like tied it into like Avatar with like the airbending. Okay, I said, Oh, it's like Avatar. And she was like, Yeah, there you go. Yeah. And I was just like, Yeah, it's just that basically. It's just yeah. A little more. It's like Avatar with more elements. I guess you could say like more specified in the elements, I guess. Yeah. I mean, well, because hold up. Because earth bending, the sub bending for earth bending is metal bend- bending, which is material. That's true. That's true. Material kind. I did not know how to say any of them while I was reading the books. So I used to say them like completely wrong in my head. And I will never like remember how I used to say them. But when you, so when you first like started watching the show and stuff and you're like, listen, you're like watching and like reading the subtitles and stuff. What did you think about like the world building in the sense of the languages and all of the, all of the symbols and stuff? What did you think about that when you first saw it? It was a lot. And I was like, like, I was like, even to this day, I still don't know specifically. I'll be like, oh, the fire guy, the red coat, <laughs> the red coat guy. Uh, that's important. Though. I know what a Grisha is. So, like, okay. that's, that's a step up. Still don't know where anything is. I know there's a north and south, and I know there's a big old, big old thing in the middle, and then there's like a east and a west. East and a west. And I'm like, okay. And then the little, the place where they are. Yeah, still don't know what the, the flying creatures are. Volcro. Okay, that's a weird name. <laughs> Volcro. It's not like they said it in the show or anything. They did. They I said that... it in the first episode. They said... that was sarcasm. Okay, like... God. Was... Oh my God. Twice. That was the most, like, that was so sarcastic. You took that so literally. <laughs> hey i have to make sure these listeners know what's up um yeah anyways 
Um, so who were your guys's, who's your favorite character in the show, in the show? Like me, I relate to Kaz the most. And there was like one specific scene that like stuck with me. And it's like a little like subtle thing. But it was like uh, the first episode, it was like when they find the guy after he just got out of the fold. And then I don't know what the dude's name was. Jasper? No, no, no. Dreesen. Dreesen, I think. He's the guy that owns everything. Dreesen. So he shoots the guy, right? Yeah. And everybody's face, they're all like kind of turning away. And then Kaz is just like old, like he's been here before. And I'm like, okay, he's seen some shit. And like, he just like is above that light where he knows what's going to happen and he's not looking away. It's almost like, like, you know shit's up with him because like even the way that he talks like because remember i haven't read six of crows either um <laughs> read six chapters three. Oh wow i was really i was really rude you could have kept it there wow <laughs> i had to be honest um you like the way that he talks he's very cynical like he's yeah just, there's like don't be on hope you have to make sure it happens on your own you got to take it into your own hands He's very like straight up, up but he's like calculated. That. Yeah, which is that yeah. Like, it's which, cool, but it's calculation because like he has to stay in between, and he loves what he loves, so he keeps it in this circle. And I'm like, okay, I could relate to that guy because I keep things in a circle. So when are you gonna read the books? Is what I'm wondering. Yeah, I'm struggling to read just like any book. Like, you can listen to the audio book. But I tried to listen to Harry Potter, and I was really into Harry Potter, but then I kept on falling asleep. <laughs> <laughs> but, like, I think, like, this one, it really depends. No, you might like it, because it kind of feels, like, a, people are always saying it's a heist book, so, like, mm. like Italian Job, or, like, um... Yeah. There's, like, literally, like, books that I've read, and, like, start to finish, and, like, read them, actually, and understood them. There's only like I could think of like three, which is like I mean I guess like the Hunger Games series yeah I read them, I remember finishing them, and then there was one book it was called Kite Runner, and that book goes like we were doing it in class but also like the way that my teacher was explaining it to me we kind of had like a good relationship and like I was just asking questions, and the way he would explain it I was like wow like every word means something. And I was like, oh, I haven't had an experience with a book like that since. Mm -hmm. so like, like, if I find the right book. Yeah, I. I... Explaining, like, I was reading the first <laughs> five pages. And they were explaining everything about this dude. It was like, oh, his boots were disheveled. And I'm like, oh, okay. What book is this? The gun, the gunslinger. It's the book based on uh, that Dark Tower was based off of the movie Dark Tower with uh, Idris Elba. Oh, gunslinger yeah. is the book. Gunslinger is the book. Oh. So someone gifted me that book. I had never heard of it, and I looked at it and I was like, "They gifted nah. you that book." Yeah, I don't know. It was part of I don't I don't know how I got it. Somebody get, get sent it to me. Don't even know who. There was a note actually in it. I and I was like, I was like, oh Grace. Go, oh, Grace. <laughs> Oops. I am so sorry to you if you have sent this book to me, but it's not my cup of tea. I'm sorry. And I was just like, hey, here you go. <laughs> and this was recently that I read the book. So that's why it's still fresh in my mind that it was just explaining like the way he held his holster, it was loose. And I was like, that's a little goofy. Like, <laughs> I can't take you seriously, guy. But like, yeah, I guess they're like trying to like, it's like when something is taking itself too seriously and I know they're trying to be serious, I'm like, oh, it's kind of a little. Suspicious. Suspicious. I, you know. I think you'd like six of crows because it is that it's kind of it's a very easy read i think um i read it in like a day um wait 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 wait. let's go further into that real quick give him some context he's excessive she reads books in a day and or two or three yeah i've been I reading books now like within two to three days 
a month. That's no, no, no. the fastest. I read like Catching Fire in like two weeks. But like, but the, what I'm gonna say is, Grace, it is a it's a very fast paced book. It happens within a fast timeline, and so you're always it's always keeping you on your toes. And you're always like, it's a page turner where you're like, okay, I need to know what happens next. And you get six point of views. So it's not like you're only in one person's head. So you kind of get different views to the same story or different POVs to the same story, which makes it really interesting. Um, and it's not as much world building as Shadow and Bone, but you still, and you could understand it without reading Shadow and Bone. Yeah, it's, that sounds pretty cool. I like the different perspective. Because even in, in the in the show, like learning about like the different perspectives and like the hierarchies and things, that was the most interesting thing to me. And I think that's what like resonates with me. And if there is a season two, which I think there is. Yep, they've already renewed. I'm not paying attention. No, no, no. Because like I was watching the thing and it was like, oh, confirmed for season two. And I was like, whoop, whoop. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Whatever. Anyways. Uh... Wait, what? <laughs> Because on Netflix it says confirmed. Confirmed. oh it does yeah. yeah okay like when everybody was like screaming about like it being confirmed for season two I literally thought it was confirmed for season two like three weeks after it aired like I thought they had like confirmed where like oh yeah we're gonna do make start making season two I thought they had already like I don't think they officially but I think they were like oh we're gonna start season two if a show ends like that it's confirmed for season two yeah kind of like bridgerton where it was it was a fun not like everybody loved it this of crows was in the top 10 top five for like three weeks and then top 10 for like a month you mean shadow and bone what did i say six, six of crows <laughs> i know jacob and i don't know her like who is this <laughs> what <laughs> Anyways, the Six of Crows book, it follows Kaz, Jess, Inej, uh, Nina, Nina, Tyus, the guy, yeah, and yeah. then another person. Who you don't know yet. Yeah, he'll come on later. I'm he'll come on later. Or she. Or, or she. That's or, true. They could. They haven't told me anything. I'm sorry. Not it. <laughs> well, I mean, like, you know, whatever. Yeah. yeah. Okay. I, I was making a point though. You were. I was. What was I saying? <laughs> I forgot. Oh, it was like the different perspectives. Yeah. 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 It was like one, and this was like my favorite scene. It was like when she just got carted off and they're in the middle of the woods and it was before the ambush. And they were like talking about how, like, he was like, oh, nice to meet you. And she's like, kind of like, oh, oh. with, uh, with Fyodor or Fyodor, yeah. something I, like I that. Red coat guy. Red coat guy. Red coat dude. And he was like, kind of explaining his whole like ideal. And there was one like, kind of like happy and giddy. And there was one like serious and like. Oh, and, Ivan and Fyodor. Yeah. He was like. Fyodor. Fyodor. Saying like Grisha were like, kind of ridiculed and like almost like hunted. It was like being a witch in like the Salem witch trials things basically. And I was like, oh, so that's like their whole thing. It's like, they're still hated, but they're protected in a way. And I was, I could see how there's like kind of classism and things like that. And the way he was like talking about it, it was like, okay, there's some bad people. These guys might be bad, but there's a reason why they're bad. And it's a little more gray in that. And I really like, like that part. Cause even like the bad dude, Darkling, Prince Caspian, general ben barnes yeah at the end i was a fan of him i was like i'm rolling with you because i can't stand alina <laughs> my dude <laughs> my dude so for that scene when she's talking this is something that i really i was really it was a really big pet peeve of mine because there was a little spoiler for what was going to happen because in the sub if you have subtitles on before it even happens it goes shouts in fjordan and so it spoils for you that they're gonna get attacked because they're talking in like ravkin but then it says shouts in fjord fjordan and you're like and then it immediately they get ambushed uh -oh. like a couple seconds after they get ambushed but i was like just nitpicking i'm just nitpicking at netflix but it was annoying me so much because like every time i would see it all the time when I'm, 
<laughs> hey, was- but that the, the people with subtitles us um we love subtitles because of those little things when we're watching something we already know it's like when you're re-watching, you love subtitles because it's just like, T, that's why you have subtitles because you catch those little things. Yeah, the guy I heard... says something in the background and you're like, oh, mm-hmm. you said that? And then like people around us are just like, how do you even know he said that? And it's just like, well, that's why we have subtitles because yeah. of this. But... Nacho Libre and Napoleon Dynamite, watch those <laughs> with subtitles. Not. Oh my gosh. Those are our favorite movies. Family movies, th- like our whole family loves Nacho Libre and Napoleon Dynamite. Every family does. And if you don't, what's up, dude? I think I've never seen Nacho Libre, but I've had this like running joke with this guy I was in business class with in high school. And I was like, yeah, I've never seen the movie. And he's like, <clears throat> he was like, you're going to watch it. And I was like, no, I've not watched it since. You need to watch it. That's our hey, only. You don't need to watch it. But if you want to experience this thing called joy. <laughs> no. I don't want any joy in my life. It's literally, literally, we're it's we're the like type of people who thing. like will quote that mm. often. Often, I'm talking about like three, four. And it's times the a weird week. lines too. It's not like the the everybody loves lines. Like I'll like hold on to somebody and be like anaconda squeeze, <laughs> and you don't know. You don't know. <laughs> unless you watch it then you know so you gotta watch it if you ever come around my family you have to watch it yeah i will we can do it we can do a party like a what are those not the netflix party the screener parties yeah it is is it we are getting so off topic back to back to back to um so he said his favorite character was kaz what's your favorite character that you can't ask me that question. I can. No, you have to ask me about what is my favorite character per point of view. Because I had multiple favorite characters. I have multiple favorite characters too, but I just resonated with Kaz. <sighs> I can't I told you I liked, uh, What's it? Jasper? No, no, no. I liked... Uh, the Darkling. Darkling. At the end. He was my dude. I was riding with him. Alina, you had your chance. It's because he doesn't like characters who all of a sudden are bestowed with this like I remember you telling me you don't like characters who are bestowed with this type of power and then be like have this all powerful moment and then deny it and then go back to like well I don't know how to use my power I don't know, I don't how, know, to know how to use it and, yeah watched it and this is like an idea that I had okay so like if you look at like I was just paying attention you know I haven't read the book or anything but like you know how like there's amplifiers and things that like make you stronger than you are right so like when she was like the first time she like kind of unleashed her power, she was holding on to Maul, right? And like I was like, I was like, okay. Oh, she was grabbing him. She was grabbing him. In the first episode, when he, he, she's being taken away on the ship, she's first being clawed. She she's like being clawed from the back. Yeah. And oh, she- I know what you're seeing. You're talking about. Oh, okay. I was like, I was like. What scene are we talking about? Like the very end, the very end. Okay. I was like paying attention to it again. And I was like, I was like, okay. Like, is that a thing where like he's an amplifier or like a, a person who like boosts up their powers, like the little elk guy? Don't the know. The, oh, the, the, elk, the, the, the I called him elk guy. Do you say elk guy? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's an elk. The stag. Yeah. Was he an elk? A stag. <laughs> Okay, the white it, stag have you seen an elk it's big like that a stag <laughs> yes literally big. called a stag the entire series anyways uh-huh the stag okay like, so your theory my theory was kind of and it's kind of like rough because like i was just re-watching it and i was like i was like okay suspicious like i'm just paying attention to just logic you know your power just doesn't come like whoop de do. Oh, my lover's dying. I'm just gonna go poof. <laughs> well, they like, weren't I'm- lovers. They were friends. Even her lover. Yeah, it was just like they were still holding hands like this, and I thought like <laughs> they let go, and then boom, I go. But no, stayed holding, and I was like, hmm. And so- remember, Darkling was like like 
to like boost her powers wasn't he touching her she is an amplifier yeah but maybe maul is and he doesn't even know so you do you think maul is an amplifier or do you think that the stress of the situation of her like this is the first time that she's gonna lose either she's she's gonna lose maul for like real and you don't you don't think that had a part to play and it finally like it could be both but i just paid attention to like if they lose contact because if they lose contact then my theory's dead but they did not lose contact and they stayed holding on to each other and even him if you look at his face he kind of makes like this little like oh and i was like is that because like i think because he's injured <laughs> I don't know because like that yeah, scene too. Like, uh, and then uh, yeah, because you know? like when I was rewatching that one scene too, I was just like, okay, first of all, if I'm dying and my person's getting taken away, I would not be so. He has this face of like, like kind of like when you take a deep breath for the first time in a while of like just clarity, in just holding on to her as she lights up. And it's not even like, oh my gosh, shock or in pain or like, you know, it's like he's holding on and then there's something else. Like, I don't know. He just looks a little too calm in that situation. I would be like flipping out. But then again, that could be. She's scared of the dark, so. (laughs) (laughs) It's not. I'm not terrified of the dark. It's just. Say it, Grace. <laughs> I'm not scared of the dark. Um, I just don't like Sure, we all believe you. Mm-hmm. Yeah. We all believe you. You can say that. Got over. Anyways. So, okay. So your theory is that Maul is an amplifier. Could be. Could okay. Be. I'll run with it. I don't like how they split up at the end. I'm, I'm, I'm getting all over the place. No, so, no, no. so my question is, if if Maul is an a- amplifier, what what do you want to see happen? If we're going to continue this theory, what would you expect to happen? I would want him to like kind of like it, like kind of leans into it, but don't hit it on the because I kind of like those little subtle things. But like at the end, this will pay off later. And maybe he doesn't even know he, he has it really. Mm hmm. So if he's an amplifier, do you think he's Grisha as well? Or is he not? I think, like, you can go anywhere with this. And I think if it's, since she's so rare and a sun summoner, like, a sun summoner is like a one of one thing, right? Uh, Her having a close relationship to him gives him that ability. That could be a thing. I could oh. see it, it kind of like that could be reasonable since it's so such a rare ability. If I have this like deep connection to him, they could, in a way, become his thing. And so, since he had a good now, oof, I just thought of this. He had like a really good relationship with that stag. Like he was the one that found it and was looking for it, and the only guy to find it. And he's such a good tracker for what? What makes you a good tracker guy? <laughs> <laughs> I never got into. Gil? It. It's true. He's he's a good fighter. No, he's I mean, not a good fighter. He's a good tracker. But like he was fighting. He was a boxer. He's a boxer. That's true. Tracker. He's a good tracker. Uh, yeah, I like that. I like that theory. But, and and um, he was a. Uh, so you're saying that like you think because he grew up around Alina that her, what she is, bestowed him with the ability of an amplifier, or it just so happens that they got close because he was an amplifier and because she was a sun summer. I'm saying okay. This is going to be a big picture thing. Okay. But since it's season one, you know, you can't set up the big bad guy, the, the whole, like, if there's a power beyond, if there's, like, multiple things into play, if there's a, one great purpose or something like that, right? I'm I'm saying, like, if she is, a, like, this big thing that's supposed to be, and since she's one of one and she's supposed to, like, reset this thing, her being close to him kind of gives you, like, a, a, you know, like, no, I'm it just so like, happens. I'm, I'm just saying, like, okay, like Jon Snow, right? Game of Thrones, right? He's 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 the uh, he's like set out for this purpose of doing these things, and all along these guys are like kind of around them to do things for good, and they might bestow him some power just just to get him to the next level. And I see how like it's kind of like uh, the show kind of went into like this kind of like family kind of like group 
thing. And I could see it like kind of sticking with that. That's why I'm kind of upset they're, they're separating again. So with, so there's three books. So most likely be only three seasons. What would you want to happen to Mal if he is an amplifier? Is how, 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 if he's an amplifier, how do you think his powers would work? Like, can you, like, do you think he'd have to, like, would he have to, like, cut a finger off and give it to Alina or something? Because uh, with an amplifier, you have to, like, take something from them. So, what do you think would happen with Mal? Because of the stag, yeah. she had to yeah. tuck off the, they cut off the anchor, yeah. a- antlers and put them in her, which was but ugly. She, she also said there was another way. She was about to kill it, and then she was like, there has to be another way. We didn't see that way. They fused together like twins. (laughs) Ah! (laughs) Oh my gosh. Well, okay, so the stag antlers. So in the book, it is a necklace. So it's more of like a necklace collar on the, so it, but it's, it's, it's like you can see it. It's not embedded into her skin. So when you her collarbone, see- gross to it. I was like, ah. <laughs> but I think, I think it highlights the like absurdity of him trying to control her, and I think it also highlights the grotesqueness of him trying to basically enslave her to him. <clears throat> yeah, he was a a little. But his motivation, I'm I'm riding with my dude. Well, okay, so she what? Was- <laughs> <laughs> Man. He really oh, hates this. Is the Alina hate yeah. train? A hate train. It was like, come on, Alina, you could do better. You could do better. You went back to him. There was just little moments. It's like you know, and I get it. It's for like to build the story, but then also like you gotta be competent at some point, you know? Yeah. Too naive. A little for too naive. Him. There should have been moments where like, ah, uh, but then I guess like since there's three seasons. We're gonna start to see that more. Well, she is a sheltered teenage girl. She, she. I think a lot of people forget she's a teenage girl, and this is like a grown ass man. And even Le Bardugo discusses this, and even when Jenya talks about it, like she fears powerful men. And power. What do powerful men tend to do with young, impressionable girls? Yeah, I think it has a lot. I think it plays a lot on like. <laughs> on them. <laughs> what? <laughs> you said what do strong powerful men do to impressionable women uh young girls and he goes put a deer necklace on them i feel like that needs to be a quote <laughs> put this like wood clock in me. Yeah. and then in his hand yeah. it was so like, like a wood uh, ooh. That, that lessened the point for him i was like ooh, you look less cool <laughs> Were you surprised when she cut it off of his hand? Did you see that coming? Or kind of like you kind of have to do that. So like yeah. there there's competence there. So she's not, you know, completely ugh. she's learning. She's learning. She's paying attention. And I like that. Well, cuz you can see the dagger. Like she kneels down to grab it and I was like, "Oh, she's about to do something cuz she like goes back and is like looking at him and then she's like turn it was, it was a good scene. Yeah. Um, I definitely liked that her, I want to say like her willingness to start using her own power and using it for herself is starting to grow a little bit more. She's still like, I don't want this at all. But- I, would, I would debate that. And I, I and I think I think that's an interesting like topic to discuss is like if somebody truly doesn't because if you think about it, she's taken away from her family, Mal. She's put in a strange place. She knows nobody. She's starting to be controlled, and she has something in her. I think there's there's this common thing of like if you have a power, you should fully accept it. But in the books and in the TV show, it is a constant thing that Alina is like, I do not want this. It is kind of clear in the books i do not want this i i don't she she even like tries to fight it in the first season where she's like i want to go back like just put me back nobody will ever know i will be quiet she doesn't want this lavish lifestyle of living in the little palace of fighting and stuff so what did you think about that okay i i agree with you at that point because like the first three episodes she's like no i'm done with this i hate it here Mm -hmm. 
I'll never be one of you. All you had to do was just get her her favorite food. And <laughs> like, yeah, this is this is lit. I'm having the time of my life. I have friends. Ah, the magic ball. And then the old lady was down in that little cave teaching her, like, hey, you gotta take this. You gotta take this seriously. And she was like, I'm not gonna take it seriously. I'm I'm a sun summoner. Uh. And that kind of played into the naiveness. I was like, mm, Alina, come on. And, I, and that's why I'm like, I'm like, okay, it's kind of like the more she's separated from the people who actually like are there to look out for her, the more she's gonna act like this. And I was like, mm. So if you're watching it for the first time, I see like, like you're like, oh, I hate this. But then like, if you pay attention to it, you're like, oh, this place isn't everything it's cut out to be. Mm -hmm. I, well, I wish it went into a little bit more of like the kings and queens because it was like, there was like- Season two, season two, Will. That's where they come out more in the books too. Because like towards the end, the king is killed? No, it was like a group of like people. I didn't even know them. Because I feel like the, it was like they were heading to the king, weren't they? It was like they were on the boat. And they were all like kind of like officials and things like that. No, they were going back to the West. You're talking, you're confusing the book and the TV show. Me? Yeah. The king wasn't killed? No. Because he was poisoned and he's oh. sick. But he's not dead yet. He's not dead yet. Spoiler. <laughs> Genya poisoned him. Genya poisoned him. Yeah. She's been slowly poisoning him um, every time they have conjugal visits. Oh, so what do you think about that? What do you think about that storyline of Genya? No, 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 no. So the Darkling put Genya into the palace. Genya is the... Genya is the... Uh, she's jacket. the tailor. She can... um. She fixes Alina's hair and stuff. Never trusted her. Never trusted her. Mm -hmm. I have a thing where, like, if you get to a new place and the, the first, first person, the first friend, you can never really. She's like... my favorite character. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, she's cool. She's cool, but like, cool. she wasn't. But also, motive too. That's why I like, like, I like her thing because it's like, yeah, I'm doing a bad thing or I'm doing a bad thing, but I'm doing it to bad people, and this is the yeah. real. Person. And it was splitting into the thing of like, okay, mm -hmm. are you Risha? Are you human? Are you just like Rocking. for the for the north and the south people who just live like minding their own business, like who hate Grisha? Or are you? Oh, like, they're not minding their own business. They're killing Grisha. Have you seen them? Yeah, Kill yeah, them? they literally attacked. Literally, <laughs> that <but> wasn't them. <laughs> they literally enslaved Nina and put her on a boat. <laughs> Nina with the guy that yeah, but she escaped with them. <laughs> Destiny. Okay, yeah, maybe they're bad. Maybe they're minding their business, but it's like you know. Yeah, I hasn't seen that much. You gotta throw a little. <clears throat> you keep but like, it. still, like they captured her because she's just because she was Grisha and like she fought them and stuff. Okay, but we don't know because we haven't like been in their land of why they do the things the way they do. There that comes out in Six of Crows. So, you got to read the books now. Uh, what do you think about uh, Nina Matias? Yeah, it was it was a cool little like you know what it was. It was like you know how you hop from place to place. It was like like the whole like it was like almost watching like something like on fire and it's all going crazy and then you skip to them and they're just like you know, just like oh I love you so much. <laughs> oh, so love you. Ah. Uh, um, big Ugh. i'm gonna drop you off this cliff psych i love you too much what did you think of her betrayal she didn't betray him good smart boy she did not betray him but she didn't she's she thinking did. about a way to get okay, i get i get i get i get this thing of like you got to be on quick on your feet she was quick on her feet and she kind of threw it in there and it's giving time but you also have to understand that's why i'm saying like you don't know his point of view and like maybe he actually did trust a grisha one time or there were stories of like you trust a grisha one time and they'll do this to you and, and then she did it and then she well yeah he they think that it, you see it throughout the series like 
the season one, like he's like, oh, y'all lure men and y'all seduce men and stuff and then betray them. That was his whole thing when he was like, he didn't trust her for so long because there was this negative connotation of Grisha women being loud, excessive, wild, and they'll betray you whenever they can. So do you think she betrayed him? Me? No, not you. Jacob. I don't get a say. This is Justin. After. Really? Should I? It, it, <laughs> him. Anyways, continue. It's a tough question. She did not, she didn't betray him. But also, we're in a situation now where it's not going to be like, hey, I saved your life. It's like, hey, I have some ideas <laughs> that, that like you're doing exactly what like your stereotype in my culture is telling you to do. And like, I'm gonna need a little bit more from you. You can't just cuddle up with me in a hut and touch me and be like, oh, I'm all feeling funny and warm. It's not gonna work like that anymore. You gotta get them flowers or something. Or waffles. Yeah. Waffles. Yeah. Okay, Grace. (laughs) Grace, do you think she betrayed him? No. Okay. I knew we were on the same page. Well, I wanted to say it. Anyways, <clears throat> I got to say, remember, I haven't read Six of Crows books. I don't know anything about Nina and uh, Matthias. And uh, everybody talks about how Nina is like this like plus size uh, icon. And she's just like this beautiful woman. And she doesn't care about anybody. And she's just like the few thicker women in books that isn't about her trying to get skinny or anything like that and so I went into this hoping to see it I kept seeing all this controversy about her the actress that was uh casted for her saying that she wasn't big enough or anything seeing her in the show she was a perfect size like I thought she looked beautiful and like looked yeah like she had (laughs) Like, Jacob, if for all of our audio listeners, Jacob's making like a curvy figure and squeezing in the background. <laughs> well, so I understand with like the idea of like plus size representation. I understand that. But Danielle did an amazing job with the character. She I think she really embodied the character. And I think I think we have to say that like it would be different if it wasn't her. It would there would be a different chemistry and stuff. And they might not have been I think there's a there's a thing that like you might try to find represent like rep, but there might not be it's different for like different ethnicities and stuff. Cause you can always with ethnicities, there's always like hundreds of thousands of people and stuff but like when you look for a group of people who look like nina and stuff some of them i'm gonna say it might not that be that good of actors i know this is a little controversial but like she was an amazing actor and she did the part amazingly she made she me had such a little time too yeah and that's the thing like she had this much amount of time for an episode and like i remember those scenes like probably most vividly like the conversations they had and everything like, I remember she liked waffles. I can't think of anything of, of like, what yeah. Nina. Yeah. And Alina, Alina, not Nina. She already <laughs> forgot her name. So, Alina. Well, because, like, Lei is a plus-size woman. She said she she loved Danielle as the character. Yeah. And she supported. And I I think we discredit a little bit when it comes to, like, the idea of, like, like it like you're kind of like subjugating like oh nina can only represent plus size women like she can only be for them kind of thing where it's like it's a little gatekeeping when there are some who were danielle she isn't skinny like how inej was or alina was but she's not like a plus size woman either she's that in between where a lot of people are she's she's definitely that in between where like you can imagine her being i don't know nothing else about the actress about Danielle but like she could easily be like a size 16 or like a size 18 maybe even 20 or she could be a size like 14 or even younger than that because <clears throat> I mean smaller not younger 
yeah i meant sizes sizes not age but like it's just yeah I don't know. anyways um she's that big range in the middle that hardly ever gets shown like yeah we get a lot of plus size like if you look at like movies and cinematic industry like yeah there's not that much plus size but there is when there is plus size rep it's usually on the bigger end of it's plus like, size like ooh, it's like, never, like yeah it's, it's either like either gold, big plus sized it's or- never like me plus size where i'm like on the i'm literally on like that cusp of like i fit into mediums but i also fit into extra larges but i also fit into larges where it's like i'm in that middle where it's like but, but, but like i also understand that rap of like we wanted a fantasy character who was a plus size woman who we all looked up to as a plus size woman who is big beautiful strong bbw um <laughs> but i i loved danielle i loved danielle as an actress for her <laughs> jacob <laughs> jacob's just over here like yep 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 uh we're getting onto the little uh, like she i didn't was... even know like she was supposed to be plus size but like the thing is i noticed like because like she's kind of like undressed like the closest thing to like naked in the show mm-hmm. so, it's like okay that's cool and it wasn't like a like a oh how dare she be like not up to the like i was it was like you saw her and you're like oh she got a little something something you know she got a little mm -mm." and appreciate that honestly their scenes together i chemistry the chemistry between this wisconsin boy and Danielle was, that's the funny thing. He's American. He's American. Yeah, I could, yeah. No, I couldn't. Tell. No, you but, couldn't tell. Shut the fuck up. Yeah, you could not tell. Everybody was surprised when they found out he was American. They were like, Peter. Wisconsin. He just published a book. Do you know what book it was? <laughs> Wait, do you know the book? I don't know the book. Oh, okay. I thought you, you were looking at me like you knew the book. Because, like, my coworkers and I have been trying to find out which book he's been published. Oh I'm going to find it, though. Best believe I'm going to find it. Anyways, him, okay, like, so I was talking, so Jacob and I, we talk often about, like, you know, what's our type, physical features, or blah, 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 blah. Come on, we do. When? When it's just you and me. Okay. I don't think it would. Yeah. Yeah, okay, okay, okay. You talk more. But it isn't like a, oh, specifically, it's time to talk about that. No, it no, no. It gets no. to that. It gets, it's not like we're going to talk about this today. Yeah, let's, talk, let's set a schedule. <laughs> it's not like that. Types. It's just like every now and then we'll be talking about like, you know, people we see or people we talk to and then be like, oh, this girl's pretty cool, blah, blah, blah. And I'll talk about what type of guy I like. This man was the type of guy I want because of ha- of his freaking shoulders. I saw that and I was like. Yeah, even I know. Okay, the oh. scene where he's like told her to like turn around and stuff. What? Have you heard that? No. He's like, I even noticed, ooh, his back. Yeah. <laughs> okay, but that scene when she turns around and watch like sees him like undressing and stuff, like everybody, like men and women were all like, oh. Like, oh. Yeah. <laughs> so, I like immediately went into five push up. I'm like, I gotta <laughs> So gotta be- So Jacob, for yeah. you, what was your favorite like action part? Not like more of like the oh, this was like a not a literary, but like where it was more of that like, oh, flowy kind of feel. But what was the one where it was like an action piece in the series that was like your favorite where you're like, oh my gosh, this is, looks great, amazing. Like special effects? Yeah, special effects also. But it was like that kind of like intense feeling like them on the train or the final battle on the skiff. Like which one was your favorite? Like, and I don't even think it's close, but like the first time they go into it and they start getting attacked. And you start seeing like everything fly around and mm-hmm. like dragged off the ship. You even like chuckled, which was a weird thing to laugh at. Yeah, I laughed too during it. Like, oh, and I was just like, because <laughs> she was like, "Come on, where are you? Come get me!" Idiot. Like, and then <laughs> she gets taken away, and I'm like, ah. "Yeah." And she was, if you pay attention to it, she was a person that's like, a uh, light attracts attracts the the monsters. And we're the fire people. 
like even somebody says and you're a fire person why would you come you bring light and she's like well when the darkness comes we're gonna take we're here to protect you and i'm like lady you're- you had taken <laughs> like wearing like a kick knee sign <laughs> like in like middle school Boop. <laughs> see ya <laughs> So your favorite was, I think for me, it was the train scene where with Milo and the conductor was like, the goat is for you. (laughs) And when they were like, oh, why'd you bring the goat? And he's like, Jasper, take the goat. And there's like, I'm not going to throw the goat out. He's like, no, it's for you. (laughs) I think that scene was iconic for this series. That scene was pretty dope because like it was at first, it was just like, we haven't seen what any of them really can do yet. Um, a little bit of a, an edge. Yeah, a little, a, little, a little bit of an edge of what she could do. And that was like the time that Jesper was just like, ta da 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 yeah. Right? And I remember you saying something like earlier. He's just a trick shot guy. Yeah, he ain't he, never smoked anybody. Yeah. He ain't about <laughs> it. Little did I know, he was do 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 do. And I was like, yes. But then he still didn't shoot that one guy, Ivan. Okay. Yeah, but that was later in the series. Yeah, but he. He shot didn't somebody. shoot him yeah. in the head. They got bulletproof keftas. He figures it out after two shots. Aim a little higher, dude. Well, but that's the thing is, just he wasn't looking to kill him. He was just looking to immobilize him. And what does he do? He hits him in the exact same spot over and over again. It's kind of like a, like, you know, bulletproof vest. Like, yeah, they're bulletproof, but you still feel it. Like, if you get shot with a bulletproof vest, it's, it's going to hurt a little bit. So if you get hit, if you keep getting hit in the exact same spot over and over again, like the fact that he was able to hit in the exact same spot over and over again. That coin trick that he does like in the, his first- Oh, that was good too. He's up the coin and it goes Bleh! Yeah, I went like, oh, cool guy. Trickster. Like him. <laughs> I was like, who's this loser with the cane? Little did I know. <laughs> did you say the loser with the cane? <laughs> <laughs> um. So- my question, um, you probably don't remember the scene, but it was later in the series when um, David is reading in the carriage and um, Jesper and he hits Jasper with the book and Jesper goes, he hit me with a book and then he holds up the book. Do you remember that scene? I remember, I'm, I kind of pointed it out about the book. Do you remember the book was the shadow and bone book? Yeah. Yeah. Was- like the front of it with like the the little lines and stuff yeah okay i was wondering if you knew that um i don't know if you noticed but so in episode two when we first see alexi come out of the fold and he's like all like he's all covered and he's like panicking and stuff and he's kind of in hysteria and everybody's looking over him in that scene you see dreesen look over and look out for like a split second so that's how Dreesen found out about Alexis. He was there. Did y'all catch that? Yeah. So uh, no, I didn't. I didn't realize that people didn't notice that like the first going through. And I've I've like seen it every time. I'm like, oh, there's Dreesen. But yeah, he. That's how he found Alexi. Was he looked? He saw Alexi. He was over in West Ravka, and he saw Alexi and was like, oh, I'm gonna take him. That's. Which is kind of suspicious because, like, this dude comes out and they're all waiting for people to come out. You would hold that dude, question him what the fuck happened. And that's how it happened. And the army is still there. Like, they're still part of the same. But we don't know Dreesen's resources. And we don't know how West Rafka is ran. See, we didn't spend enough time there to see the pup. The political system true how and goes. then how that it one... looks like the wild west there man and oh, it's yes. just vibes that's I keter saw, dam that's keter dam i saw that's, Chinese food. that's keter dam oh it is sorry my bad that's no no west, west keter dam is like that it's like the it's like new amsterdam it's 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 that's what it's um based off of is amsterdam is that kind of like pirates of the caribbean What's that place in Pirates of the Caribbean? I know which place you're talking about, but it's I forgot. Where they're all drunk and they're all doing... Yeah. I forgot. Okay, I'll look it's it just, up. It's just, it reminds me of just like a cool... Everything. I mean, I wouldn't want to be there. 
because you know I'm not. No. It's like no. Tortuga. That's it. Tortuga. That's like like that. In Pirates of the Caribbean, where like Jack goes and they all drink, and then that's where he gets like There's his only new three crew. places I remember in Pirates of the Caribbean. It's it's uh it's the it's Flying where- Dutchman. Uh, the the little the the voodoo lady the little swamp place mm-hmm. and then uh, wherever Jane's from. Okay. Anyways, there it's like a long list. Oh, and the, the, the 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 cannibal island. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> okay, Oops. but like Ketterdam is like that place of like nobody's really in charge. Everybody's from everywhere. Need more scenes there. It's the it's like the hub. It's that like central location where everybody goes to trade. It's that it's it's she based it off of Amsterdam where it's like there's a lot of ports. There's trading going on. There's multiple. Everybody goes there to trade. It's that central and you have like the um, merchant council who kind of run it. Um, but it is mostly like gangs and who run it. So you have like the bastard of the barrel. So you have the crows. You have. Um, what is his name? Um, that guy. Yeah, that that one guy, the one that he went into the other. Old club. Old, old old dude. Um, oh, fuck, I forgot his name. Hold on. Anyways, I, him. I have yeah. the cast. I have the well, cast pulled up. There, I, I like Ketterdam too. It seemed pretty cool. Um, mm. I really like the scenery. In- yeah, that was pretty cool. Okay, Every- the scenery. Everywhere. I want to be. <sighs> They they shot in so many places for this, and it looks beautiful. But Ketterdam, I think, is my favorite because it just it's it's. I loved Six of Crows. I love Six of Crows. So seeing it come to life and kind of the tight to tight spaces and like running around at night because like in in the day it's like low key, but everything happens at night in Ketterdam, and so it was just amazing to watch it as like a reader and be like, oh. Everything like, life. going into like the cinematography of like every scene of how they like pulled um their camera angles and stuff like that of like getting a lot of like the actual world into it was like really like cool like I haven't read right right I haven't read Six of Crows but like seeing how Ketterdam was like the fog throughout like the streets and how like that orange glow and everybody, their costumes was all dope. And then you get like a complete juxtaposition of when you go to Ravka where the Grisha are and everything's bright, everything's open, a lot of green. Right. You can see the classism. The classism is definitely represented when you have the Kirch and you have the gangs and stuff and you see these tight knit spaces and you see them all stacked together versus you see places like Ravka where it's like this open space there's uh what's it called um royalty and stuff but like we all don't want to be in Ravka we all want to be in Kirch and but I think I there's definitely like undertones and classism classism highly highlighted in the series as well look at that where the army is it's all dirty and grimy of like very brown everybody's like gray yeah overcast and then you go to like the palace, everything's all pretty and light and shiny. It it, it 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 kind of it kind of that like connotation of like the military is yeah, they're viewed as like, oh my gosh, this spectacular thing, but when in reality they're treated like shit. Point blank period. They're treated like shit. And they don't have the best conditions ever sometimes. And especially like um well, because like Ravka is based off of like Russia. Um, and like kind of that Slavic and then Fjordan is based off of like the Sweden, Finland kind of place and then um, Chuhan is Chuhan is like China um, yeah China basically so what do you think about that? about their little oh, uh, racism? yeah in the thing yeah it wasn't on the nose it's, it's weird because like you know sometimes like racism done right mm-hmm. is really like you know kind of like set it you know, like, okay it kind of like if you hit it on the right like it's hard to say because like you know if, you, if it's done right then it kind of resonates with you better but if it kind of feels like an after school special where like hey don't treat all 
people equally and it's like oh i like this that it's more like you know like she's kind of like this is my life and this is how it is but also i'm the most powerful being here so like now this still doesn't i still bow down bitches (laughs) it was kind of cool like that yeah i wish it went a little bit more into that but you know because it I, I I think we will as the series goes on. I think we have to remember that this is the first season and it really episodes. Okay, I hated that. But, but like I understand because I feel like it was the perfect amount too. Like I feel like if it was any more, it would have felt too long. But then if it was any shorter, we would have all been like the fuck. Yeah, because it had it had it been any longer, what scenes would you have dragged out? Her training? Yes. Cause she only trains for like so three minutes yeah in Is the she, book it's a lot of training it's like a speed through okay give me one thing where you learn like a cool like little boo attack all she has is <laughs> what is that uh, gonna do i would have liked to I'm see gonna put on glasses and be like oh sup <laughs> i would have liked to see that relationship with um the trainer mm-hmm. and her yeah that and there's a there's a relationship with the trainer and Alina, like actually teaching her like hand hand combat combat in the books. Yeah. Like to the point where at the end of like almost towards the end of the book, he ends up giving her a, a knife. Yeah. Or, he's he's Shu? No. I think he's from Novizium. Okay. And <laughs> they are also not too cool with Ravka, which is where they're at but like somehow he he became a trainer for all of them and teaching them how to fight and everything and with her he's just like you need to know how to fight and not rely too much on your powers and he ended up like really focusing on her like yeah you're all this powerful but you need to know how to be like hand-to-hand combat that's gonna save you and he gives her a knife so that's the thing that's the one thing that i wish we had so i don't know if you've ever watched game of thrones but you see this like um sam when he's um learning um he, there's like this uh comp not compilation but like kind of like where it's like going through his daily thing and you see it every single day repeat 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 i wish we saw that like we saw alina training um being with <clears throat> ooh, um with the trainer and then going to um what's her name uh his mother yeah bagra and like we seeing that daily thing, I wish we saw that. Cause then that would, oh my God, <clears throat> that would explain how she was able to develop her powers. Cause I felt like that too. Like her powers developed really fast in the TV show where it was kind of like, mm. yeah. So that would have been nice. But even then, like her, what are her powers? She's Some- a sun summoner. It's not how do a we, physical. How do we how do we use that against like a, a little? You'll line? see it more in the next. More, but like <laughs> a little, like okay. Well, we see she can blind people. Because like really, like if she if you look at it, like she is completely underpowered right now, and my dude is walking with the whole fold and can control it now. You but you gotta you gotta give me something. Well, cause what what did she? I'm trying not to spoil anything. So at the end of it, her and Mal are doing what? Someone remember, because I don't remember at the end. She's on a, they're on, on the, the ship? ship? Yeah, but where where are they going? They're, they're just, just going to go high? I think they're going to Ketterdam. Why? Because the, the crows are on the ship as well. But they're not going with them. But they're all on the same ship, so it's most likely going to Ketterdam. Okay, no. They are going to Ketterdam. They're going back. The crows are going back to Ketterdam and they're on the ship. And then you see Mal and Alina are on the ship. So they're going to Ketterdam. Yeah, but they're not staying together. They're going to split up. They, they might. Okay, but they could be Alina, down the street. Alina and, Alina and Mal are going to Ketterdam, but then they're going somewhere else. Are they? Well, yeah, they're not staying with the crows because they don't know the crows. No, because they're going to go farther they than should, that. They're, they're, they were talking about going to some other country that they have yeah. not. I think they were gonna go to the Legion Storm. Yeah, that guy. Up. Well, I think I think they're gonna meet you know who in um Ketterdam. Uh, I you know who 
um, I'm not going to say it because I don't want to spoil it, but the guy who everybody is excited about. Oh, oh yeah. Um, I think they're going to meet him in Ketterdam. And I think that's how it's going to go in season two. I think they're going to, he's going to be, this mysterious man is going to be the person that takes them to their other place. Yeah, I think that's, and they're going to meet probably in Ketterdam because they have to, because they have to go to Ketterdam to go other places because it's kind of that port hub of you go there and then you go it's like a layover in Ketterdam and then you go um so uh to ask this question because I, I sent him the quiz earlier did you do the quiz yeah okay I'm an infer furry in, inferni inferi inferni yeah. uh I had him take the Grisha verse to see what Grisha order he would be in and he's an inferni what's an inferni it's the fire guy. Mm, red jacket dude? No, 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 no. Blue jacket dude. Blue jacket dude. Put him out here. Firebender. Yeah. Firebender. Okay. Cool. Okay. Zuko. Yeah. Mm, definitely. Okay. But like they were, the questions they asked me, I was like, I would do neither of these. <laughs> Any of these. But I guess if I have to, I have to I have to. I have to send you the, the, the one with the six of crows to see which crow you would be. I'm Jesper. I've never, I've never done that one. Oh wait, I was. I feel like I'd be the train guy, man. <laughs> Just the conductor? Yeah. No, it's only the crows. He's not a crow. Oh, uh, but he's a he's a was it one of those uh substitutes? Com- complimentary. Oh yeah, one of those substitutes. Okay, okay. For free, the meantime, free agent. What were you, Grace? Uh, I am an ethereal guy. No, mm-hmm. no. I feel okay. like you would be a heart render. I am a heart render. I remember telling you this. Why was I thinking ethereal guy? Because of him. Um, I am a, cor- a corporal guy, which is the heart renderers and the healers. I took it further and uh, was a heart render. Mina Zenig all the way. Who do you think I am? Just take a guess what you think I am. <laughs> I think you're... A material guy. Okay? Is that what you think? What do you think, Jacob? What do you think? Do you, what do you think? Am I that they uh, the event? Things. They do the event. Oh. So he's the one that made the gloves and like they manipulate matter into shapes. So they do metal work, bone work, fabric work, stuff like that. I would assume that because all the material per- people, they're all wearing glasses. <laughs> so like. <laughs> I feel like that would be more you. That's the purple jacket people that you yeah, can hardly yeah, see. The blue They're the cool guys. The blue blue jacket people are the ethereal ethereal guy. No. I don't know, because I don't like everybody else, man. And like the only purple jacket people, it seems like they're the only good people who don't know they're doing bad stuff. David. <laughs> Yeah. David with the raising his hand and then and then the bar the Ben Barnes was like, Yes, David. That was so cute. It was like he was like <laughs> I was, that was dope. okay so do you want me to reveal yeah why should be like water some, some, nah. so I'm at a I'm a I'm a summoner can you guess which one I feel like you're a squalor okay you give me Zoya vibes you know I wish it was Zoya I'm actually <laughs> in the darkling <laughs> yeah i was trying to find the photo because i wanted to show you oh. i'm a shadow summoner or i forget what it's called yeah a darkling i'm the darkling yeah basically that's what you wish you got home no you don't wish you had that because uh he has he has, a, he has big responsibilities okay he has to do what i he- like power that's the thing he likes power but he know he, like he doesn't it's not he's only craving power and i hope they don't mess up this character by making him solely evil and just being a like one of those like mustache curling bad guys like they always do because mm. like he has reasons to be upset he's trying to protect grisha he might go to extreme lengths but there's a reason for that everybody has their own reasoning that's why i like this thing the only people i can see are complete bad are the kings and queens because like they're never good. They're just, they're just never yeah. good. 
I won't tell you or give you anything about the Darkling and what happens. Um, so are you a Dark Lena stan? So do you want the Darkling and Alina to get together? Because I don't like Alina. Okay. Because Ben hope. Barnes is a Dark Lena shipper. Yeah. He is. Well, because in the book, their romance is a little smoother. Romance. Yeah. But also, you know, I could see how, yeah. Because like there's moments where I'm like, I'm like, okay, she could mature and she could do these things. And like, yeah. And like, I could still see how they could work out. They could still work out. They could work through this. It's not, it's just a tiff. Would you rather her end up with uh, the Darkling or would you rather her end up with Mel? You like Mel? You don't like Mel? I like Mel. He's he's a bro. He's my dude. But my, you had how many years of growing up to make a move? You didn't kiss her that last night when you knew you were gonna die. Come on, man. Come on. What's the move? You're living out in the woods with her. Do something. Say something. Give a little like, hey. <laughs> So what is your rating for the series as a whole? Of five stars. Out of five stars? Oh, see, I hate the five stars. Okay, well, out of 10, out of 10. 10, okay. Or you can do Rotten Tomatoes percentage. Percentage. Ooh, that's even more specific, so I like that one. I'd say it's like a, it's like an 80, maybe, no, like an 89, 88. There's like some moments where I'm like, uh, that feels too low, but like, I just want it. There's a place it can go higher. So I'm leaving space for it to like get up. Mm -hmm. That's, that's kind of why like, if, if a season one is like 90 or 100, there's only one place to go. Down. I could see it getting better and better. Okay. I like that. Cool. Should I, should I get into specifics? Why? I don't know. Alina bugs me sometimes, but <laughs> growing on her. So there's 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 things there. Um, I don't like how the crows were like kind of like second fiddle and like they were kind of like, you know, almost like useless at the end, you know? How they failed. It, it was kinda, all power at it the It was end. all power at the end. And I get like you could do that and like they're they're beyond like something, but also like it felt like, you know. They were kind of like restricted to just shooting guns and like that's knocking people over and like. But if you think about it, that's how the Grisha view regular people is. They are beneath the Grisha. It's the Grisha is the first army, and then the regular army is the second army. Or no, it's reversed. Am I right or am I wrong? I have no idea. You know. I think the first army is the Grisha because they're they're considered more like Grisha are considered higher class citizens than and that's why there is this hate towards Grisha because they are considered and you see it in you see it in that ending where they can't even they can't even fight like regu like Kaz yes Kaz Jesper and even Inej is losing against the Heartrender. Because even though she does have all these slick moves, it takes him to grab onto her arm and her heart rate to slow down and then Zoya to step in. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. I think that's also kind of going into like the classism and stuff and the play on it. And I hope it is resolved. Um, what do you think is going to happen with Zoya? I think she's just going to, look, this is what's going to happen. We're not going to see her for season two, maybe, maybe. In season three, she's gonna come back and she's gonna have like, like a whole like character arc growth. She's now cool. Maybe she's a mom. Who knows? She can go either way. Um, but like I could see how like she could just like turn into something good. You're giving that face like, oh, she's gonna be. She's. You're not gonna like what, what's gonna happen to her. Maybe I, just the mom thing caught me off guard. The mom thing did yeah yeah well, kind of like, this... like like i imagine her like going back to her hometown and then there's only like a little bit people left like, no they were all dead okay then they're all dead and she goes back and maybe she finds one guy maybe there's just hope there there's nobody i have no idea whatever i don't know what happens to her she might go on a revenge thing and like just like i know what happens because i'm in the third series reading king of scars duology 
it's like it's it's the, the Grisha trilogy, Six of Crows mm-hmm. duology. It's two books, and then and the King of Scars duology. Duology. I just want like there to be like a kind of like building an alliance to where like okay, Zoya's over here, and I trust this person, so she could build her little camp here, get some people who follow her, follow the cause, set up. Do you space think right she's here. with Alina now? With yeah, obviously. Cause? I think she they kind of align better. There's it's no like common to... enemy. I think it's it's okay. There's the Darkling. There's the kings and queens running things how it's supposed to be run. There's Ketterdam where they want to just vibe. They just willy-nilly. Then there's the Alina crew that's like, okay, we're for this cause. We're the good guys. And we're just doing the good. And Zoya lines up with that, I think. Okay. For the good of the people. For the good of the people. Not completely. She might do some weird stuff and like maybe stab her back but like i don't think she's gonna outright just be like i'm not with you anymore mm, mm, i think mm. she aligns okay That's really cool. did you like how it hinted at nina kind of joining the crows when did it do that well at the end they were talking about like oh, oh we have another plan yeah, yeah. and she looks over them yeah. it's just like yeah the darkling's dead yeah that's 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 kind i of- like that Cause I'm just like, okay, cool. Cause I really like Nina's. Cause we see how she gets inducted into the crows. Cause we don't know how really in the books, but what did you think of the last scene of Ben Barnes walking out of the, I like how I refer to him as Ben Barnes, uh, mm-hmm. the darkling. darkling. He's Ben Barnes. Yeah. How do you, what did you think when you saw him? Like, did you know, like this dude ain't dead when he started walking out and then he like told the, the Volcra behind him to follow what did you think this was like my whole theory and i like spit it to her i told her like what i think should have happened what could have happened what might happen probably isn't gonna happen but this is my wish i don't want him to be a bad guy but i want him to align himself with the bad guy so maybe while he was in there there's a bigger bad thing in there and he, it's like a portal or it's like anything that like it opens the world because like this thing didn't come out of nothing it came out of him. Came out of him, but also like again, you gotta keep in mind, uh, we have been we like a bunch of other types of shows where there's always a the bad guy is not always the bad, the bad guy. guy. It's a bigger bad guy always. So Darth it's... Vader, bad guy in the first one? No, he's actually there's actually like a emperor that like controls him and he actually ends up being the good guy at the end. I'm just not going to say anything. I'm just going to keep a blank face because I'm not going to spoil anything. Literally. Because, like, because I'm doing good with spoilers, though, this episode. Grace, I don't know if you've been catching me, but I've been I've been keeping a tight lip. Pretty good. Uh huh. Continue. So, so, this is what could, like, what, what I wish would happen that he is now, like, all right. I'm going to go take over stuff. I got to align myself with the bad stuff. I got to go full on into this darkling persona because I tried to be cool. I tried to like, kind of like, you know, ease my way into it. Have Alina line up with me. Need the sun summoner. Nope. Now I can control this thing. I'm going to use it to my advantage. And he's going to keep on doing that. But then he's going to realize like, hey, maybe this isn't the vibe. I don't want to rule over all darkness because, you know, I kind of like the sun. I hope it like it like there's that like he balance. balances out. He balances out. If he doesn't balance out, you'll be disappointed. Uh, I'll see it coming, but like you know, I just like the dude. You he like was... the character, or you like Ben Barnes? I like. He the likes char- the character. He doesn't like Ben Barnes. I like. I could like Ben Barnes. He looks like a. a He's a sweetheart. Yeah. He's so sweet. Uh, yeah. He reminds me of like. He looks like dog. if I meet him at a coffee shop, he'll shake my hand and be like. Mm. <laughs> Well, I think this is a good place to end. I'm going for like an hour and a half. Yeah, almost two hours. Um, I told you. Yeah. So this was a good conversation. This is the first time I actually like talked, talked with Jacob. Because it always happens on the podcast. Always our guests. It's like the first time I'm actually having a conversation with them. Well, you have been around when he's talking. But like, I've never talked. Like had a conversation. Yeah. Jacob also helps us when we're writing. He's our common sense checker. 
it has been like six months, but yeah. Yeah, it's yeah. been six months. He, he, and I remember like, that night. <laughs> <laughs> he he literally came in and we're just like okay we need you to run some things by you does all of this make sense does the world make sense because you know he you, if you've been listening you see him kind of seeing what the motive is behind everything how everything lines up he's really into that so we asked him to help us with it after he did we had a really good meeting and then like the next week he's just like so when's the next When's the next meeting? Yeah, and I was, I was like, like, our last meeting. Yeah. Yeah, like, <laughs> we're like, we're cutting a break here. I'll let you know. Break. I'm going to get back to writing. I'm going to get back to writing. Well, Jacob is our, our fact checker for sure. I got more ideas now. Yeah. Oh. I remember it though. Yeah. Um, hey, it was really cool. It was really cool. I was even like going to sleep at night and being like, ooh. Oh. Wow. He was invested. So, so Jacobs is going to be a beta reader as well. I oh, am yeah, beta reader. Oh, I don't know. I don't know if we want him actually to be a beta reader because of the scenes we have planned. He can handle it. You can handle it. I've seen stuff. <laughs> can read stuff though. Maybe he should read the deal. I might giggle. You know, I would giggle it, and I'm like, oh, the way he caressed. Oh no, but but elbow. we. I don't know. Is that what you're talking about? <laughs> Not the... Way more detailed than that, sir. Yeah, Not the elbow. But... Yeah, but I didn't want to say exactly because, like, the elbow looks like whatever. <laughs> okay. Okay. Continue, Grace. What were you gonna say, Grace? Um, <laughs> the the weenus. Yeah. The the weenus. Okay. Um. Yeah, you might you might be able to. I'll, I'll give you some stuff. Test it out, and you can let us know if it sounds cringy or if it sounds smooth yeah will you be reading six of crows <laughs> like i don't want to i don't want to let you down man so i'm gonna say maybe okay i can take that i don't even care if you read it honestly <laughs> and then it's like it's like a 70 percent no 30 percent yes but it's rising every time i hear it. good thing about it so grace just go it's like literally like my schedule and trying to organize things and he he's not the type like you know me i can listen to an audiobook and then do stuff him he wants to actually have the book in front of him as he listens or as he whatever is and i'm just like yeah that's how i am too i like to read it as i listen yeah we'll see if if he gets into it it'll be on our listeners yeah. if our listeners yeah. will the next time Which you see me, I'll have like a whole shirt and be like all about. Um, so do you want to plug any of your socials? Yeah. <laughs> Should I? Yes. Uh, so yeah, I'm on Instagram. Not, not on Snapchat. Oh, uh, it's Guacamole. G U A C O B M O L E. Believe that's how you spell it. Also on TikTok, have one video. We'll tie. We'll do a video. Yeah, we'll do. We'll do a thing. And most likely on a TikTok, we'll have him a video featuring him. So if you haven't followed us on TikTok, make sure you guys do so. We do post sneak peeks of upcoming episodes, and we'll most likely have a video there yeah. with this food up in there. Yeah, I'm food. Uh huh. And yeah, you guys yeah. have now met my brother. Congratulations. Yeah. And if you follow me, I'm a weirdo. Just getting that out there. If you didn't, if you stuck along long, long enough to hear, this isn't even the half of it. There's a lot more stuff, and it's 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 not all it's good. Not. So when if you do follow me, be prepared. You. Sorry, that's on I'm, you. Okay, so um, Grace, do we have anything to plug for us? Any individual stuff? Um, I got my Apple pencil, guys. So. <laughs> She's been talking about that for a while. <laughs> Is it still in your purse? No, it's on the floor. <laughs> in, the box, in the box, in the box. Okay. Uh, so pretty soon, most likely by the end of July, we will be having our first set of enamel pins out on our shop. So you will be able to pre-order them and make sure you buy them. Um, we'll probably be doing um, a few vinyl stickers for Tumblr, so you could just stick them on there with our logo. We are gonna be redoing our logo very, very soon. 
So that keep an eye out for so that. If you want to get a vintage logo set. Yeah, definitely, definitely hit us up on that. We're going to let you guys know um, when all of those things are going to drop. Make sure you guys follow us on Instagram and make sure you guys follow us on TikTok. We are posting a lot more videos. I am sticking to it. It's just been a wild week. We have some aesthetic videos coming up. Yes, we do. And um, I have giveaway. I'll link it down below. It'll be the first link. Go enter the giveaway. That's it. You're going to, if you enter when you get 365 days and a copy of Court, a Court of Silver Flames. Oh, spicy set. Yeah, it's a spicy set. It's a spicy set. You should read 365 days. No, don't. Don't, the, 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 don't, the don't do it. Don't do it. Don't do it. Oh, is that the guy who cuts off his arm? <laughs> no. It's 300 hours, right? Yeah. yeah, yeah. No, 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 no. 365 days. Okay. So, great. Yeah. So, you lost, baby girl. <laughs> oh, you lost, baby girl? Massimo? Oh, that guy. <laughs> Stupid. <laughs> Don't read it. Don't read it. There's not even the iconic, are you lost, baby girl scene. Um, Binge stuff. No, yeah. I don't. I don't know. I don't right, like right. We'll see. We'll see. Okay. We'll see. okay. So, thank uh, you, everybody, to have been listening. Have a good day, man. Yeah. Go do something inspiring. Okay. okay. We'll see you. Bye. Yes. <laughs>